welcome to the presentation of binomial nomenclature and as you can see binomial nomenclature this contains three parts to it the first part is two by means two nomial meaning word and nomenclature is basically the system of naming so punch them together and you will get binomial nomenclature is a two word system of naming now it was first started by gaspar bohin but he is not so famous father of binomial nomenclature is carlos linnaeus and after carlos linnaeus introduced binomial nomenclature where they many naturalists from different parts of the world started to develop it further and uh, develop more rules to make the binomial nomenclature more standard now there there were different groups formed due to it first group was icbn or the international court for botanical nomenclature this group dealt with the nomenclature of plants now this icbn was for later replaced by icn or which is the international court for nomenclature now this uh, the previous icbn included only plants but as the, the different kingdoms were discovered such as fungi and protist this uh, was this was replaced by icn and the international court for nomenclature dealt with the nomenclature of plants as well as fungi and protist the next uh, the next thing was icnb which cannot be called icbn because it will be the same thing so it was the international court for the nomenclature of bacteria so it dealt with the nomenclature of bacteria just like that and the next thing is the iczn international court for zoological nomenclature zoological nomenclature means the nomenclature of animals and that is another group and the another group will be the icbn or international court for viral nomenclature now you might find it strange because viruses viruses are not living creatures viruses are basically um, partially living partially uh, not living or non living things when they are present in the surroundings uh, they are just behaving like non living matter but when they come in contact with any living organism they start to reproduce and uh, they start having life so it is very difficult to classify uh, viruses or name viruses so there are the viral nomenclature is a little bit different than that of the botanical nomenclature bacterial nomenclature or zoological nomenclature so the rules i am going to talk about here is not for the viral nomenclature so let us talk about the rules so what are the rules first of all you may know this that any binomial name consists of two parts the name of the genus followed by the name of the species but did you know this these words should not be less than 3 letters and should not be more than 12 letters so you cannot find a name a binomial name where the genus or the species word the name of the genus and the species is less than 3 letters or more than 12 letters if you can find some tell me about it in the comments now the second word second rule is if the name is computer typed we make it in italics but if it is handwritten we must unlight underline it so you can see over here that every nam name that i have typed over here is made in italics so that is how the scientific names can be made to stand out in the whole group of text now the next rule is the gender of the specific name must be the same as that of the gender of the generic name how mangifera indica and tamarindus indicus are the scientific names of mango and tamarind just see over here this mangifera ends with an a so the indica also ends with an a but when it became tamarindus us it becomes the indicus us so this in latin this may be some kind of gender specific like ending with a may be feminine or masculine i am not sure about it but it if the generic name contains a gender then the gender will be the same gender will be present in the specific name that's it now what is the next rule the generic name is unique but the specific name cannot be repeated sorry the generic name is unique but the specific name can be repeated what is the meaning let me again refer to this example mangifera indica and tamarindus indicus so you can see the root word is indica indic i n d i c like that or if you are not happy with these two examples 
let me give you a example where uh, the specific name is indica that is hopotelia indica that means children so that is the specific names are same for both the scientific names but the genus name are different isn't it strange just think if the two organisms belong to the same species they must belong to the same genus just think of it but here the genus name, uh, the species name is same but the genus name is different so that comes because of the rule that the generic name is unique but the specific name can be repeated not only the generic name but the kingdom phylum all the tax rank taxonomic ranks the name is unique unless it is the species in the species the name can be repeated and in the subspecies also means after the species any taxonomic category the name can be repeated so it is not like any definite name for that now you can visualize it that uh, binomial name like the generic name can be called as a noun or it is the name of the this actual name of the organism or species and the specific name just describes the species like an adjective so mangifera indica again here mangifera represents that it is mango and indica here represents that it belongs to india tamarindus indicus tamarindus it is tam tamarind and indicus again uh, indicates that it belongs to india uh, not always it is india let us think about periplaneta america that's the scientific name of cockroach and americana here refers that it belongs to america or it is related to america and if you say any, any other example like that where it is not location specific you can say homo sapiens homo over here represents man and sapiens is wise so homo sapiens represents wise man so that was just for your information let us go to the next rule in case of the binomial names we generally write the name of the author generally write the name of the author and you can you can see the example given here homo sapiens l i n n which indicates the linnaeus linnaeus named uh, gave, gave this name for the first time so you can see that the name of the author is not italics ital made in italics so that is a rule only and you you can see that linnaeus is not completely written it is abbreviated as l i n n dot it is only done for linnaeus but not for other authors because linnaeus was the father of bin binomial nomenclature and he named a lot of organisms a lot of species so we can just make the name linnaeus abbreviated so people will understand it but none other authors the name is abbreviated generally now what is the next rule in zoological nomenclature the generic name and the specific name can be repeated like naja naja gorilla gorilla so what is that you can see just see that generic name specific name repeated but in botanical nomenclature this is not encouraged what is this called this is called totonym the this type of name is called totonym just we had to give a the names to this type of names so we call them totonyms so it is not encouraged in botanical nomenclature so that was it and the genus and the specific names are derived from dead languages like latin so bad but why so that it doesn't change from time to time it was the reason why it is derived from the dead languages and uh, so that it doesn't change from time to time and let me give a piece of information over here there is not only the binomial name but sometimes we use the trinomial name it was given by lackmark and it as you can guess consists of three words trinomial three words and in the animal kingdom the third word apart from the genus and species name is a subspecies name and in case of the plant kingdom it is the variety okay so let me give you the example um, in the animal kingdom let's say homo sapiens sapiens you might have heard it it is the modern man so here homo sapiens is the genus and the species but the sapiens after it comes uh, about the subspecies it belongs to like uh, this the name of the species is sapiens and the name of the subspecies is also sapiens like that let me give an interesting fact again the name you can see the totonym gorilla gorilla there is one subspecies belonging to the species gorilla which is also named gorilla so like gorilla 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 but maybe there is only one gorilla there we are naming it 
gorilla 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 a good joke okay and now let's move on to the next topic that is the typification so whenever an author discovers a new species he or she describes the new species by either a photo or a herbarium sheet which is used for describing species or a drawing so that that original drawing that the author used to describe the species is actually called the holotype or the specimen is selected by the author for its for description but then what is the paratype the paratype is the duplicate of the holotype for example the author might consider the fact that the holotype is only one but the holotype may be required in multiple places at the same time so that so the para, the author might create some more holotypes but then it is not called the holotype anymore it is called the paratype like that then what is the neotype let's say the holotype created by the author is very very expensive right so it may be stolen or it may be lost or it may be damaged by any time any time so that the afterwards people create a new specimen for describing the species so that is known as neotype new meaning new in some language maybe and what's the same time that same type is the duplicate of holotype if the author didn't create a holotype only for example at the time linnaeus existed there was no such rule for creating or giving or submitting a species when you describe or discover a new species and there was no rule to uh, draw or create a photograph and uh, create a specimen and then submit it so whatever linnaeus name didn't he didn't submit anything about that so that now when we require all those things all those documents we created on my on our own but we are not the authors of them right so we we cannot call it an holotype so we call it a syntype it is a duplicate holotype and what is the lectotype it is a duplicate duplicate paratype if the specimen was not given by the author and we have created on our own it is syntype okay but if they we require multiple syntypes then we will call the other syntypes as the lectotype but it is called the duplicate paratype because it is not given by the author so that was it about the binomial nomenclature i hope that you found the video interesting we will meet again later thanks for watching